Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Beloved, we greet you, we greet you, we greet you, we greet you, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, wherever you are, please just try to join us and share the broadcast. We salute your love, we salute your love, we salute your love, we salute your love, we salute your love. Thank you so much. Please, wherever you are, just say, share the broadcast. Just share the broadcast, just share the broadcast. Please say something. If you have joined us, just say something, just say something, just say something. You have people who are, who are joining us. Marco Vicent. Marco Vicent. Thank you so much, brother. Please share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Let me also try to share here. Showed us the names yet. Okay, let's see what coming in. Let's see what coming in. Joyce Nzaka Bianca Ngoman. Okay, thank you so much. Please just share. Keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. Let's tell others we are here. We are here, we are here, we are here, we are here. Uh, this technology of yours. Uh, so please uh, let let others know that we are here. Um, yeah, let others know we are here. Let others know we are here. Let us know we are here. Can you please share also to our uh, group, our uh, Facebook? Okay, thank you. And then, um, also, is it possible that you can take my other like the gospel of Baloi. Is it possible? Can you try to do it? Uh, Apostle. Uh, thank you, brother, for sharing. Thank you, brother, for sharing. Thank you, brother, for sharing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we are enjoying the presence of God and greater things is what we are trusting God for today. So, but we are waiting for at least uh, to be, we are waiting just to be on, uh, on a good space that we, that we, we will be able to, Jesus, will be able to share into all of our, um, our winning. Please, wherever you are, just share the broadcast, just share the broadcast, just share the broadcast. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. 
we have a very interesting topic today with us. And before we start, I want us to pray. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you so much. We appreciate your grace. We appreciate your mercy. Holy Spirit, we love you. For what you are continuing to teach us, for what you have used your servants to teach, that's going to be building up. Blessed be the name forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. If you hear me, if maybe my sound is not clear, if you're not hearing me, please just wave your hand and say, hey, say we're not hearing you, or maybe comment so that we, we are actually trying to put on our technology here to be to be at work. Seeing the Lord, seeing the Lord. I'm sure many people are interested in in this kind of a topic. They they really want to see the Lord. And it's, it is very much important for people to know that it is possible to see the Lord, even in our times. It is way, very much possible. You can see the Lord. And today, we just want to take the Word of God, and I believe that is the Word of God. Visions will open up for some people. Some people will the Word of God, and many will be in his spirit and we again i just want to appreciate all the fathers in the lord in faith who continuously stand the, for the preaching of the gospel of the lord jesus christ i really appreciate so much i'm one of the ministers who always uh, rejoice when the message of jesus christ is preached i understand we will differ with our doctrines we will differ with so much but i'm grateful to in all the doctrines that are, is being brought, when Jesus is revealed, he manifests himself to individuals, and unto such individuals, he gives them what is the correct thing, with wisdom, that they are not going to judge others, or blame others. And that's how we should grow in the kingdom of God, we grow in understanding one another. One thing I've learned in life is, it is possible that there are things that I don't stand with, but that does not open the door for me to criticize, but that opens the door for me to say, I have meat, I have bones. So what must I take? Do I take the bones together with the meat or I take one of them? So it's, it's what it's needed. That's the wisdom we need in the gospel of God. If we can come to such maturity, I tell you, we are, we are going to build the body of Christ together and, and, and we are going to grow and there will be no divisions amongst us. And now, um, I want us to take the word of God today, and I don't know how long are we going to take. It is my humble desire that we don't take much uh, time. But then it's not at times up to a minister. It's up to the one who gave the message to the minister to be to minister. And at times God looks into our hearts as how much do we open up for Him, and that's what we're going to look at today. And now I want us to look. Firstly, the book of Hebrews, because that's where our topic is coming from, and we are going to look into a few scriptures by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, and Hebrews chapter 12 is a very awesome chapter. I, I, love, I love the way the book of Hebrews is written, because... You know more of you in Christ Jesus. And you know about things that Jesus has done for you. And it actually, the book of Hebrews actually reveals what had been, what was being done long ago by the law or under the law and reveals them what was the meaning of that in your time and, and, and how should you treat that because at some point the word of God is about it's about what is the meaning of this to you now. Like you can't read of Abraham and it ends there in Abraham because you are not Abraham. Even if your name is Abraham, but you're not him. So it means you need to have a now word for you when you read about Abraham. That is the mystery of Christ Jesus. Every time you have that, I tell you, you are seeing, you have, you have something so special to shout about. Now, Hebrews chapter 12 it's 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 a very 
wonderful chapter. We, we are not going to talk, read the whole chapter, but we can at least read um, um, verse um, 14. You see that man? Okay, can we read verse 14, please? Pursue peace with with all people mm -hmm. and holiness mm -hmm. without which no one will see the Lord. He says you should pursue peace with all men. And if we say you should pursue, you see, if we said we are pursuing something, it's like you are going after it. You are actually chasing that thing. You are after that thing. You are looking for that thing. And he says, pursue peace with all men, not with some men. And if you look into the Bible, there does not say with ye or she image. He says with both, meaning male and female. You need to pursue peace with them. In other words, if there is something that destroys your peace, you need to find a place also to take that thing and throw it into that particular place because there must be nothing that destroys or disturbs your peace and guess what many people today they are struggling to walk in the realm of peace and jesus says peace i give unto you not as the world gives so in other words jesus has already given us peace and now god says because Jesus gave you the peace, now you need to pursue all men with this peace. You have this peace. It is not from you. You have this peace. It is the peace of God. Where is this peace? It's destroyed in your spirit. In other words, God has deposited peace within you. So many are going out looking for peace instead of going in looking for peace. If any man is in Christ Jesus, it's a new creation. The old things have stopped to me. Pass the way. Behold, all things are new. Where? Where are you? You are in Christ. And he says, pursue peace. Pursue peace with all men. What is this peace? It's in Christ. What is Christ? Within you. Where are you? In him. So this is the mystery. The more you get into you, the more you get into Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you find that peace, it simple means... You don't expect other people to bring peace to you. No, you are the giver of peace because you are following people with peace. I don't know if people are hearing me. Yeah, yeah. You are following people with, with peace. So if you follow them with peace, it means that you're the giver of the peace. Mm -hmm. So don't expect someone to say, no, they don't give me peace. They must give me peace. I tell, no one on earth will ever give you peace. Only Jesus. Where is Jesus? I and the Father, come on now, I will come and live where? Mm -hmm. in, in you. So Christ is where? It's in you. Now, if He is the giver of peace and now it's within you, then when you follow people, you follow people with, you, with Christ Jesus. Now, what, what's happening here? It means that you are the giver of what? Of peace. Yeah. So it says, follow peace. Pursue peace with all men. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you people are getting this. We're getting you. Follow or pursue peace. Mm -hmm. You see? With all, all men. In other words, don't go for men. Go looking for peace when you are going to the men. Peace must be before you. Behold, I am going before you. Mm. You see? So if it's before you, it means it's the king of the peace. Then instead of you looking at mistakes, the mistakes of people, something that will destroy you, you look at the person of peace. Jesus himself. I'm hearing this. Amen. Now, it says follow peace with all mm. men. With everybody. I will hear people sometimes and say, oh, I don't know how to live with this person. I tell you, if you're a person of peace, you can live with everybody. I've lived with people who you can't stand uh, their presence for, for some minutes. One little thing, then they will become... Mm. And then you're surprised. Huh? You were smiling now. You were happy. What's, what's wrong? There is, I don't know if there are demons or maybe the, the demons which visit them or whatever. But, 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 but out of blue, they will change their character. They will change their... I have lived with such people. And I believe many of us as believers, we are living with such people. How are we managing? It is no longer our peace. But Jesus gave us his peace. So because of Jesus' peace, then we are above our emotions and feelings. Are you hearing this? Follow peace with all men. In other words, 
in the days where there is no peace, where people are moving up and down, trying to do this and that, trying maybe finding help, this one, this one, this one, I tell you, there is peace in our time. And that peace is found in Christ Jesus. It is within you. Amen. You see, what are we talking about when we speak about peace? We're talking about rest. Friends, you, we are resting in Christ. We are resting. No, there are people now who are at rest. Many are busy worrying if I'm sick, having this and that. I'm telling that those who are not worried of anything, they are at peace. They are living in peace, not in pieces. Follow peace with all men. And, that's what I love. It says, and, what? Holiness. You see? And, holiness. holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Mm. Mm. See the Lord. He says, without holiness, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Holiness. You know, whenever we speak about holiness, we are talking about God's standard given or exposed. That's what God has exposed himself. He, the realm of God, it's now brought to men. You know something to say, this is an achievement as like, I fasted 40 days. One can fast 40 days or 90 days or 100 days and not be holy. <laughs> because holiness is not in the action of men. Holiness is in the action of God. That's what God chose to reveal himself. And for you to say that he is holy, be ye holy as your heavenly father is holy, it means that that kind of standard is the standard of Christ. He is manifesting. And that's something, something that we want to look at today. Now, he says, without holiness, no one shall. That's what he said, then. Eh? For with no Without which no one will see the Lord. Mm. Looking carefully. Okay, now look at. I want to. Uh, my translation says shall. And then, can you read that again? The last, the last, the last. Without which no one will see the Lord. Without which no one will. Mine uses the word shall. Shall see the Lord. Will see the Lord. In other words, no one will see the Lord without holiness. And if, as ministers, we can all say, we understand about the holiness of God. Holiness, it's not righteousness. The difference between holiness and righteousness is, righteousness is the state which is brought by Jesus for you. But that kind of state does not put you in separation with what Jesus has already done in your life. But then when you speak about holiness, it means you and Jesus are standing in one place. There is no you, there is no him. But how, can, how must I put this so that you understand? There is no me, there is no him, there is we. You understand it? In other words, if you have seen Jesus, you have seen me. If you have seen me, you have seen Jesus. So, at least it's manifesting where? In me. I honor everything that Jesus did. And I put my heart onto such a thing. To see it what? Manifesting. You understand it? Now, he says here, he says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. This is not, he's not talking about going to heaven. No, he's not talking about going to heaven. If he is talking about going to heaven because of holiness, it would mean many people who died under the law, they were not supposed to wait for the day of the Lord. With their own holiness, with their own kind of strength, maybe they would be standing to be holy and become whatever they want to become as in, based on the standard. But now, they had to wait for the holy man who is holy in his own to give them his holiness so that whatever is about them do not be about them but about him. Do you understand it? Mm -hmm. Now, 
For you to say to see the Lord, seeing the Lord is a revelation. You get, you get it? Seeing the Lord is what? Revelation. Seeing the Lord is a revelation. Many a times when a man of God will say, I saw the Lord, that's a revelation. If that was not a revelation, it would mean that Jesus appears to us in the same way. But why others are saying, I saw Jesus like this? Others are saying, I saw Jesus like this? Others are saying, it is because that's a revelation. Remember the what is written in the book of Revelation? He said, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. You see? So the revelation of Jesus was given unto Jesus. Now, that's where the Bible comes and says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So you see, if you see, the, the Word of God reveals Jesus. Jesus reveals the Father. That's what happens. So every time you see the Father, you have seen Jesus, and that's through this Word. So this is the revelation of Scriptures. That's when the Scriptures, the, 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 the Word becomes flesh and dwells amongst us. That's when we see the revelation of the Word of God. And now many people are saying, Lord, I pray, cry for you. Show me your face. Lord, I cry for you. I want to, what are they saying? Visit me, please. I want you to visit me. Oh, I want to. Okay, it's fine to pray like that, that Jesus can visit you and stuff. But I want to advise you, he visits you based on his word. <laughs> Every time you have a revelation of his word, Jesus visits you. I'll give you an example. In the book of John, that man who had been speaking about Jesus, after when they rejected the man, the man did not reject what he had. He was rejected. You see? So many people, they reject, they reject what they have and looking for what they have rejected to come back to them. And that's not going to happen. You see? The moment you reject what you have because of what? Or because of the rejection that you have received. I tell you, that thing that you have rejected won't work for you. And that's what many people are doing. At times, some people will say, I'm very angry at God. God not answer me. I'm very much angry. Okay. Do you know God answers you based on his word? And you're saying, I have cried to God. I've given tithes. I've given. Okay, it's fine. But when you are giving, did you see him? What you're giving? Because whatever you do, as long as you do it outside of revelation, that thing is not going to be to yield an answer to you. It can give you something like saying a glimpse of what you want, but it won't be in its fullness. The fullness of the thing thereof, it's in the word. When the word of God is revealed, then you have what you're looking for. Irregardless of how tough the situation is, as long as you carry the revelation, I want to promise you, there's something greater coming upon your life. And guess what? Many people, they won't run to the word. You know what they're going to do? They're going to run to the man of God. Man of God, please pray for me. And the man of God says, stand there. Oh, hallelujah. God. And then, guess what? You, but if you're speaking, you're going to be like a blind person. Come into the word. Come into the waters. Hear the sound of the waters. And I tell you, when the man of God speaks a word, what he says, it becomes based on God's word. You know what Jesus, what the, what, what, what the Lord says? He says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you have seen well. For I look after my word. You know, he says, I look after my word. Jeremiah chapter 1 says, I look after my word to perform it. So God is not going to perform your mind. He's not going to perform your feeling. He's not going to perform your tears. And some people say, I cried in the morning. <laughs> I cried in the afternoon. And then God is going to look at my tears. Okay, you're telling everybody that God is going to look into your tears. It's fine. God is going to look into your tears. Yes, you can see your tears. But tell me something here. Is God going to be moved with your tears? No, tears, your tears, if your tears is emotional, it's not out of the love of Christ, He's not going to do anything about it. Because your tears is after the flesh, God, and you know what the Bible says, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. You see, so that's what happens. So many times people will find them and then they are whatever, it's mixed up, their face mixed up. I've been crying unto the Lord, for what? No revelation. If you don't have, you are wasting your tears. I want to tell somebody, if you don't see the Lord, you are wasting your tears. <laughs> you, you are actually wasting your tears. That's what many people are doing. They are wasting their tears. And can you please tell people that they mustn't waste, waste their tears? Some people will be bitter if you tell them that. You know, some people will be angry at you. Say, do you think 
the rest of the 30 years that I've been crying unto the Lord, it was just a waste of time. Oh, it was not a waste of time. But the thing is, <laughs> tears outside revelation. It's caused by emotions. And such emotions, God is never just moved by just the emotions. We need to study scriptures. I will explain that verse that says that Jesus touched by our, 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 our infirmities. I will explain that sometime when we get that. What kind of infirmities? What is he talking about? Because it's not just any infirmities. Of course, of course now, for you to say, everybody has to propose you, and then you say, you don't know how to say, mm -mm. you are going to, mm. and then you come and say, oh God, oh, can you allow them to break my heart? Come on now. Did God take your head to say, God, and did you have a revelation of him saying, no, don't do that. You see, so that's the thing. So don't, don't even go there to say to blame God because many people are blaming God for something that is not part of it. You see, he's actually not in that business of wiping uh, or maybe looking at people's tears. It's not in that business. That's why he says there will be no more tears. <laughs> there will be no more tears. Now there is tears, but the tears, your tears, should be tears of revelation. You grasp, they grab that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's let's. Let's try to look at that. He says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So it means that there is something that is placed for us. And that thing is holiness. My goodness. Brothers and sisters, in trust Jesus. You see, the Bible says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Many people have been read that. Let's, let's, let's look into that before we get into a lot of stuff. You know where is it, right? You think people are full of the weight here. <laughs> you don't know where is it. Okay. Chapter 4. Philippians verse 19. Look at it. But my God. Oh, you're still going. <laughs> Look at it. Chapter 4, Philippians, chap Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Look at it. Hmm? And my God shall supply all your needs. You see, I, I love the the, 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 you know, I, I always tell believers, I always tell believers, don't make mistake. I always tell believers. You know what I've realized? I've realized that um, you, a person is just born again today. And you know what other believers will tell them? We are fighting against Satan. Then I believe this new, new a baby in Christ want to fight the devil. Come on, somebody. A baby in Christ want to fight the devil. And we, we need to, we, you need to groom that person. Do you know a baby cannot fight the devil? Do you know that? A baby cannot fight the devil, cannot fight... Does not know anything concerning warfare and stuff. I've got two babies outside. They can't fight the devil. They don't know what is fighting. I, I tell you, if my, my, my little one who says they come in, we'll just laugh and say, hey, hey, hey. And because there there is no consciousness of whatever. You do you get me? It means that's why the book of Ephesians, you see, the book of Ephesians is there are six chapters. You know that? Six chapters. Do you know the first chapter, the second chapter, the third chapter? It's about you and Christ. The book of, it's about you and Him, Him in you, what He has done to you, what the Father has bestowed upon Jesus, and what is it that is accomplished to you. And that's what it's all about. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 2, Ephesians 3. That's what you're going to find. So you find your identity in, in the first three chapters. Why did God choose that? Why did God choose to, to put the first chapters? The three chapters, which is an epistle. Why did he choose that? It is because in these chapters, that's where you need to know. Look, look at it. The first chapter, second chapter, third chapter, you trust, trust you, Father, trust you, you, the Holy Spirit, trust. That, that's what, what it's all about. Now, chapter 4. He comes and speaks about things that is to be done in the church. Apostles, whatever. Those things comes after <laughs> after this, this maturity. From there, you hear about loving each other. Whatever. Marriage. Husbands and wife. From there, you hear about spiritual warfare. Chapter 6. 
I mean, <laughs> these three other three chapters. That's where you know how to love. You cannot know how to love, how to submit, if you did not know who you are in Christ Jesus. And guess what? People are not, they don't know who they are. They don't have even these foundations. Then they want to go for loving. They want to go for submit. How can a baby know how to submit? You see, how can a baby know how to fight? They don't know. That's the reason why some will say, I take you down, I put you under my feet, and you look at their feet, and you say, hey, my goodness. This, this small feet, they are feet afraid of sleep. When they want to sleep, you know what they will say? Lord, I invite you to come and sleep with me. Lord, you come sleep with me. <laughs> yeah, have you heard that? And some will say, if they want to take me, be taking a trip, Lord, I ask you to go with me. To go with you. Don't you see the time you say, I invite you to come and sleep with me? You are saying, you, you are not with me. That's what you're saying. If you say to come and be with me, it means he is not with you. And what does this word say? Behold, I am with you until the end of ages. So it means that these people, they don't know who they are. They don't know that he's with them. So the moment you want to invite him to sleep with you, and mind you, the Bible says he does not sleep, even slumber, but you want him to sleep. So do you see how many people will have problems because he's asleep because of you? Come on. You see, so that, that's some of the things that we need to get these things in the word of God, see the revelation of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in the revelation. Look at it. Paul came to this maturity where he said, but my God, you see, but my God, not our God, he personalized God as his God. That's maturity. Because not everybody will say, my God. There are many gods in this world. So it means if God, if Paul will talk about this and say, but my God shall supply, it means that this man was mature in the revelation of Christ. You see that right? Yeah, but my, how does yours read? And my God shall supply all your needs. You see? All your needs. Uh -huh. According to his riches in glory. Oh, lovely. According to his riches. Where? In glory. Uh -huh. By Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus. You see? My God will supply all your needs. Who has a need? You. Who supplies the need? God. And then according to what? His riches. Where are these riches? In glory. So this, this is some of the things that you, you know, before, oh my goodness. Before you arrive in the glory of God, you arrive in His riches. Grabbing a revelation of this, you will know that you are blessed beyond measure. That's why the book of Ephesians chapter 1, look at the chapter, he said, Blessed be unto our God, unto God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. With every spirit, oh my goodness, with every spiritual blessing, where? In the heavenly, you see, look at that, it's in the heavenly places, heavenly realms. You are already blessed. So look at that, before you arrive in the glory, and that's why many people stop, it's in the riches. You see, my God will supply all your, all my Needs all your needs according to his riches. So there's what riches, and then after riches, glory. You see, so many will get stuck in the riches after discovering the riches. Where are they stopping in the riches? And that's not where you need to stop. There's a deeper place, it's called the place of what of glory. But guess what? Glory is also a cover, it's a covering. There is another deeper place. It's called Christ. Look at that. He does not say Jesus Christ. He say Christ Jesus. So it's by you seeing Christ Jesus that you will pass the stage of what? Of riches. Passing the stage of what? Of glory and become the manifesto of the glory. Are you hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? You need to, for you to be that manifesto of glory, it means that there's something strange that God has to do through you. And then many people will say, no, this person, we have seen many people of many servants of God who have been operating in that glory and they thought like they can be satisfied. Then. No, you cannot be satisfied in just that manifesting of glory. There is a place where you need to dwell in his fullness. See, the fullness of the Son. You see, that's the thing. The fullness of the Son. Now, he says, 
we, 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 we have come. You see, we have come to the person Jesus. And because we have come, it means that there's something so strange that God wants to do. Something very much strange. And he really wants to do that. Alright, now, I want us to continue looking here. And then, I want us to continue looking here. Goodness. Alright. I want us to look into something in the book of Matthew. We are talking about seeing the Lord. Matthew 17. Dear Jesus. Matthew 17. Let's look into this one, please. Now, mm -hmm. after six days, mm -hmm. Jesus took Peter, mm -hmm. James, and John, his brother. You, you remember, he says after six days, this means the seventh day. And you remember what Jesus was talking about? It was after two powerful chapters. I, even if I can go to chapter 16 of Matthew. You remember chapter 16 of Matthew? That's where... Uh, that's where Jesus rebuked the Pharisees, meaning the disconnection or because of their blindness. He rebuked them because of their blindness, meaning that blindness should not be part of the new creation. And then from there, Jesus speaks about the church. The first time he mentions the church and he says, this church is a strong church. He says, this church is built upon the rock and he says, all the foundations of what? Of hell. You see? There's nothing that the foundations of hell will go, will do anything about this. And he says... And then from there, that's where Jesus spoke about his death. Powerful chapters. Chapter 16. Starting chapter 16 alone, you understand, you will understand what Jesus came to do on earth. And how did he accomplish that? You see that one? Now, if you look into that, you realize, you realize that um, Jesus told his disciples. He says, some of you standing here. Listen, you remember that's where after um, Jesus uh, said that, Peter went, took Jesus by head. He went with him outside and he said, he say, he say, don't ever say what you said again. <laughs> you see? Okay, so let me just try to show you something. It was, he grabbed him, he touched him, and said, don't do what? He took him outside, so it's five, holding another five, to go out. Meaning, don't come together. I don't know if you understand it. Can I try to do this? Explain it again. Yeah. Five. End of Peter. Five of Peter. Five of Jesus coming together. Let's go out. Meaning, don't allow grace to come in. Let it be out. And Jesus said, Ah, I've not come to be part of the law, sir. I came to fulfill the law. Then Jesus had to grab him again with another five. Going out. Going in. So, without me inside, you cannot be you cannot fully function. So he had to grab him inside and comes back and says to him, Get behind me, you Satan. Someone said to me, Apostle, but don't you think Peter was offended? No, Peter was not like you. Who is always offended after everything? Peter understood what was happening there. Peter understood that the mind that just came upon him, it was the same mind that came upon Eve. He understood that. So he had to allow what has had to happen. And that's what exactly happened. So the Bible will tell you that. And then Jesus did not entertain a lot. He just said that. And then from there, Jesus started speaking about, he continued speaking about his resurrection. And he says, some of you standing here, he says, uh, shall not test death. I love that. Shall not test death until you see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Okay? Coming into his kingdom. So it means the glory of God, seeing the Lord, is seeing his kingdom, is seeing the Son coming into his kingdom. You see that problem? Now, that's why the Bible says, after six days, Jesus has said that. He took unto him, he took with him Peter, James, and John. And we try to tell believers what is the meaning of that. And then he took them up high the mountain by themselves. Up high the mountain. So Jesus did not take them down. He took them up because the standard of the Father is above. See, you remember the book of Colossians chapter 1, chapter 3 verse 1 says, right? Since 
Oh la la. Maybe somebody there online has yes, to, those who are watching us, maybe they can just try to help us speak scriptures because these are my people here. You, you, you forgot Galatians chapter 1, 3, verse 1. Look at that. Oh, what a glorious word. If then you were raised with Christ. If then you were raised, meaning past, you are already raised with who? With Not Christ. with your uncle. That's why you don't have to dream your, your dead uncles. Oh my goodness. You don't have to. Oh, oh, oh. Not with whoever is dead, no, but with Christ. Meaning, the most important thing about your life is about Jesus. Oh, can you read again? If then you were raised with Christ. Not with your grandmother, but with who? With Christ. Christ. You imagine? So many people, their visions about it. I saw this, I saw all. I saw uh, Kukwana coming again. I saw my woman coming in the vision. Like, Come on, somebody. Your vision should not be centered on people. Your vision should be centered on the, with the person that you are raised together with him. You are raised together with who? With Christ. Oh, my goodness. With Christ. Uh-huh. Oh. Seek those things which are Maybe bad. seeking, it's expecting what it's already been said for you. Seek ye things that are what? Which are Above. above. Not things that are on earth. Jesus took them above to say everything that you saw down there is not your portion. My goodness. When you are lifted by Christ Jesus, it means that your poverty is not part of you. Everything that you are seeing, I, I, I can tell you, as a, a young man, as a young person, I remember back in those days, as a young person, as, as young as I was, I still remember I saw myself above. And it's like I was taking a vision and I saw this kind of a place that it was so... I can't describe that place because it's like I entered in a mist and I was given a place to sit. And that day I said to myself, I will never be poor. That's what I said. It's impossible for me to, to, to be poor. No. I don't care the standard of sickness. I don't care the kind of levels and whatever. I know what I know through whom I know that is what is mine. Finish. Finish. Full and, what, what do you, what, how do you put it? You said finish, finish and, and clap. Oh, that one, finish and clap. I knew that by birth, that it is impossible for me to walk low. I knew. I cannot look down at myself. No. Because I found something about me. Every time you are taken by Jesus into a higher place, something strange happens about your life. You can't go back. You, 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 you can't. As long as there is something. Because every time you have that picture, you continue to see it. When your eyes are closed, you see it. When you open your eyes, others are busy seeing problems, but you don't see problems. You see your master. You see Christ everywhere. Everywhere you look, into every problem, you don't see problems. You see Christ. You see him manifesting. There's no comfort. There's no peace to some people who see their problems, I tell you. Every time you see your problems, you can't pray. How can you pray with problems? Because Jesus is not a problem. Who are you going to call? Because you call what you see. Uh... I'm talking alone. I'm talking alone. You cannot, if you don't see Jesus, obviously you are going to call what you see. That's why men call their men of God. It's because they see their men of God. Others are saying, oh, this is my problems. Oh, this is my disease. It's what they see. Until they are lifted up. <laughs> Until they are lifted up. They've come to a place. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus took into himself Peter, James, and John to their mountain by themselves. So Jesus had to take them. As, as Jesus took them, they had strength. Meaning this encounter is not physical. It's a spiritual encounter. Oh, we need to finish these things. We need to close it. We need to close it. We need to close it. In other words, Peter was no longer present. John was no longer present. James was no longer present. There was Christ present within them. So when Jesus walked them, he was holding himself within them. So this is way divine because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So they don't go up there by the flesh. I don't know if I'm... They went there inside the glory. So this is a vision. That's why it's called transfiguration. It's a vision. It's a day. It's a day vision that they were caught up. Oh, oh. That realm of Philip. That realm of Philip of just disappearing. That's what happened to Peter. That's why this experience, we have some time to talk about it. This experience, Peter never said anything about it until when he was old. 
until when he was ready to meet the Lord. That's why he opened his mouth and talked about it. All this time, Peter was quiet. Why? Something was deposited within brothers and sisters. When the word of God opens up for you, Jesus becomes real. It's no longer Jesus of the stories. That's why the men were reading about Jesus of Nazareth. But they never seen the Christ manifesting in the Nazareth Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. So Jesus says, some of you won't test death. In other words, Peter did not test death. James did not test death. Oh, oh, oh. John did not test death. No wonder they stood up for such time. Where even when people were killed, they were not afraid of death. Because they knew it is way impossible for them to, for them to test death. They could not test it. Oh, I don't know if I'm talking to people. It means that those who will see the Lord, they can't see. They can't test. They can't test the test. Death. You know, testing death is like. He said they can't. It was the master saying this. Do you know what Jesus says? He says, that's, that's, that's Matthew chapter 16, verse 28. The last verse there. No, Rabbi Kuma, yes. I showed you. I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death. Not some sitting here. <laughs> not some sitting here. No. Not some sitting here, but some standing here. What is standing? Standing, we're talking about righteousness. So, Remember, he says, now we are justified by faith. He speaks about he speaks about the place in which we stand. So righteousness is a place of stand. He said, there are some who are in a right stand with me here. Who won't take death? But I read in the Bible, he says, all of us who have received him, we are justified. We are standing. So it means that if we are in a right state, if we are now standing, it means that we can see him. And if we can see him, it means we cannot see death. Oh my God. Those who see him, they cannot see death. They have passed the stage of death. They now have life and life in abundance. When Jesus died, he died with them. Now, the life that they have is that's why Paul says, no longer I who lives in it. I've been crucified with him. No longer me living. But it's Christ who lives in within me. That's what Paul says. Look at that. And now, you look into that verse, it says, until they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. <laughs> the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Jesus was talking about himself. Coming in his kingdom. The kingdom called Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus had to reveal. Say, I and the Father, we are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So, if you have seen the Father, you have seen me. Then, if you have seen me, you have seen the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, oh. Into a higher mountain apart. And then verse 2 says, And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. Jesus was transfigured before them. You know, transfiguration means taking another form. Jesus took another form. <laughs> oh my God. He took a form that is above death, a form that is above condemnation, a form that is above suffering, a form that is above poverty, a form that is above any disease. He took that form he before them. My people, if I take you with me, whatever I become, you become. So it means if Jesus transfigured before them, it means they also had the change. Am I talking alone here? Do I have people talking with me? Are you sure? It means that some God was also transformed. So Peter was transformed. John was transformed. James was transformed. They were no longer the same guys who came down there. If you read this chapter, you'll understand me. You will see it. Don't read it with your mind. Read this chapter expecting to see the Lord. You see that? The Bible says, His face shone like the sun. 
And when the book of Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, speaks about the son of righteousness, having healing in his hands, that's, I mean in his wings, that's when we see Jesus. That's when we see Jesus. That's when we see Jesus manifesting as the son. That the one man saw. Joseph saw himself as a typology. He said, my brothers, I saw a son surrounded by 11 stars. So Joseph had a vision of Jesus. And in this vision of Jesus that he saw, he saw one man living. There were no longer, there were no longer about 12 of them. It was 11 of them. He saw, I, say, I saw a son surrounded by 11 stars. Meaning Judas was already there. So Joseph prophesied even into that time. He saw Judas not becoming part of the disciples. And the father said, Joseph, do you think, do you think, do you think, do you think? Amongst them, the twelve, one betrayed him. And let me stop there. Some people are not, not seeing what I'm seeing here. See, so his face shone like the sun. <laughs> you know, when the sun goes down, the stars come. And that's what we see. The Bible tells us that when Jesus was born, they put him on the manger. The moment he went down, people from the east, wise men from the east, they followed the stars. They were following the stars to where the men were. Was. You see? Remember I'm talking about it. Is this too deep for people to comprehend? No. You see? So this is what we see. So Jesus is that son of righteousness. Having healing in his wings. And we see in his ministry the disease that nobody ever cured. Nobody ever Cure leprosy except God. People were so if you had leprosy, they would chase you away. You are not permitted to be amongst people. Jesus, with one way, they will say, Be thou cleansed, then the person will be cleansed. Healing in his wings. Healing in his wings. Healing in his wings. And that's what we see God saying, Have you seen what I did to Egyptians? He said, I took you into myself like an eagle taking the kind of cheats into his wings. So Jesus had healing in his wings. As I speak right now, people are getting healed somewhere as they're listening because Jesus is there. He's healing the mistake. They are getting healed and that healing will be permanent because Jesus heals all disease. It doesn't matter the kind of disease. Jesus heals all manner of disease. Have you studied the Bible? The Bible will tell you, they brought all people who were sick and he healed them. All, all of them, they were all healed. And the Bible says, we think nothing, it is impossible. Even today, Jesus, as long as you see him in his word, as long as you can draw him in his word, as long as you can see the Lord, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, everything is just possible. Even in the time where everybody is complaining and saying, hey, this and this and this, you as a child of God, if you can draw from the righteous waters, I tell you, you will not be dry. Amen. Hey, maybe I need to close these things. We'll continue next time. And then what does it say? And his remnant was what? And his clothes became white oh, as soon as the light. Became white. As the light. So you see the wholeness now. You see the wholeness now. The glory manifested the wholeness. And God cannot speak. He cannot reveal himself outside it. <laughs> huh? And behold. Mm. Moses and Eli Elijah appeared uh. to him. Uh -huh. and them, mm -hmm. Talking with him. Talking with him. Uh -huh. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus. Look, look at this. Elijah I mean, Moses and Elijah appear to who? To Jesus. After what? After transfiguration. That's what you must understand. Because Elijah represents the law. I mean, Moses represents the law, rather. And then Elijah represents the resurrection of the law. So what does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us that after when Jesus had transfigured, 
What happened? Moses and Elijah appeared. Wait a minute. Do you think Elijah and Moses came in the flesh? They appeared in the flesh. If Peter came in the flesh, James came in the flesh, and John came in the flesh, do you think they will see the spirit? You see, this encounter is spiritual. It's way spiritual. It's never physical. So that's what Jesus had to warn them and say, hey, don't tell anybody about this. He said, share this to nobody. Don't tell anybody about this because it's not for the crowd. It's for your lives. It's something that is going to withstand you. Not something that is just going to support you. It's your own life. This is the vision of your own life. Are you surprised why servants of God after saying some things? And then you say, I know we know the secret of the pastor. You find him continuing. He can't share everything with you. He will share some. Not everything. There are some things that he's told. Don't share it with anybody. Why? Because everybody that is in the church, they have something not to share with everybody. <laughs> but if you don't have revelation, if you have shared everything with everybody, something with you is wrong. I said something with you is wrong. Oh. There are some things that are just printed in your soul. You will only talk about it when you are no longer on this earth. Or you are no longer a person. You are about to. That's the thing. Okay, okay let's finish the word. And then? Verse 5. Uh -huh. while, while he was still speaking, uh -huh. behold, uh -huh. a bright cloud overshadowed them. A bright, a bright cloud for the first time. You remember what happened, right? In the Old Testament, the Bible will tell you that after when the Israelites says, no, we'll keep the law, we'll do whatever God tells us to do. You remember that? What happened? God says, Moses, Moses, I will no longer come with the bright cloud that you used to go up, up above you during the day. I will come this time with a what? Thick cloud, dark cloud. And that's when we see people starting to die. But look at that. Behold, what? A bright cloud did what? Overshadow. Overshadow. It covered them. Meaning God will not speak outside His holiness. He will not speak there. You see? And then? And suddenly, mm -hmm. a voice came out of the cloud, mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. This is my beloved Son, mm -hmm. in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. Hear Him. Hear Him. I'm pleased where? In my son. And then, what must you do? Hear him. So it means that, firstly, before you want to see visions, your hearing must be restored. That's why the disciples did not see Jesus before they hear him. And there's something clear here in the Bible. That's what the Bible says. In the end of the next verse, and when the disciples heard it, so they hear this voice inside the brightness, and then what happened? They fell on their faces. They were broken, and then and were great. They, they were afraid. full of the fear of the Lord, so they were restored in God's fear. And then, but Jesus came and touched them uh -huh. and said, uh -huh. "Arise uh -huh. and do not be afraid." So you see, the first thing Jesus touched them, meaning what was upon Jesus, was now transferred upon the church. Was not upon transferred upon. Remember, Peter, God says, Upon you, Peter, you are the rock. Upon you, I'll do what? Build my house, my house, my church. You see? And then that's what we see now. And then from there, you see, here the Bible says, uh, Jesus touched. So, meaning the glory that was upon him went where? To the church. Brothers and sisters, this is not upon the body. This is within the body. It's not upon the body, but within the body. That's why we're strong. We're strong in every season. Why? It's not upon just upon us, but it's within us. What drives us is not outside. No, it's within us. You see that one? And then, and then this is my blood sign, no matter what, please. And then, okay. And then just touch them, and then what happens? It says, arise and do not be afraid. So the sun is speaking. That's what the next verse is. When they had lifted up their eyes, mm -hmm. they saw no one but Jesus only. Brothers and sisters, we are closing. 
they heard the father. The father did not want to say a lot to them. He wanted to say from today, no longer hearing me through Moses, no longer hearing me through Elijah the prophet, but now hear ye him, my son. Meaning, whatever my son speaks, I am speaking through my son. You see that one? And then from there, what is the next thing? From there, what is the next thing? Jesus touched them and says, hey, you, don't be afraid, arise. The next thing says, when they lifted up their eyes, after hearing the sun, they saw the sun. What did the sun say? Don't be afraid, rise up. Rise up, don't be afraid. The next thing is, when they had lifted up, up their eyes, eyes uh -huh. they saw no one but Jesus only. But Jesus only. You see, in order for you to see the Lord, we'll continue with part two. In order for you to see the Lord, first you must hear his word. If you are not hearing what is written here, you are still hearing about Moses and that mountain, and then Moses with that. that. As long as you are still seeing that, hearing that, you are not hearing the Christ. I tell you, you can't see him. Grace to every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you.